This is 50 Venus flytrap plants. In this video, I'm going to put 1,000 flies in the same container as them. Yeah, I don't know, but that's why I bought this. <laughs> that's why I bought this. Thousand fly larvae. Yeah, might look extremely nasty. Green bottle fly larvae we use as feed. And over here we have the largest collection of Venus fly traps in the county. But I also have tons of other carnivorous plants that you may have never even seen before. And I'm gonna be able to do tons of different tests in this video, it's gonna be super cool. And for test number one, I wanna show you guys the smallest Venus fly traps. I know it may sound stupid, but I promise you how they work and catch insects is actually really insane. Let me show you how they work. And yeah, it's not a joke how small these things are, because when compared to normal Venus flytraps, the jaws are about 10 times smaller. In fact, they're kind of cute, to be honest. This cricket is simply too large for our miniature traps. We'll need to find a smaller insect. That's why instead, I got literally the smallest thing available. These are flightless fruit flies. If you've seen my channel before, you know they're pretty much the most useless animal. Anyways, I put the smallest Venus fly traps in the testing enclosure, then I put one of these flies inside to see if he'd get caught. Start the timer. But these traps are obviously the smallest in the world. And because of that, they have extremely small trigger hairs. I'm talking so small that if I zoom in like 100x on this footage, they're so thin that my camera can't even pick them up. I guess the trigger hairs were quite literally so thin that every time this flightless fruit fly walked inside the jaw of a trap, the jaw didn't close at all. And the fly was able to just walk out. I mean, it kind of makes sense. These flightless fruit flies weigh about point. So yeah, I guess the traps quite literally can't even be triggered by how light their weight is. Clearly the fruit flies aren't gonna work. So instead I got the world's smallest cricket instead to test. Let's see if this works any better. No oh boy, let me just tell you, things were a lot more interesting this time around. Because once again, the cricket walked straight up to one of the trap pots. I also already know this, but these plants produce a special kind of nectar around the lips of their jaws to lure insects in, like this cricket. trap snaps shut in less than a second. The cricket's fate is sealed, and it will be slowly digested by the plant. Interesting. And yeah, while I wait for those 1,000 flies to hatch, so in the meantime, I want to show- Everyone knows what Venus flytraps are, but not everyone knows what a sundew is, but they're actually pretty cool. Let me show you what they do. Obviously, like flytraps, sundews are also a carnivorous plant, except instead of having jaws, it has these long stems with these little red hairs on the top of them. 
but on each of these little red hairs is a special kind of sticky glue it produces that will make it so when a fly or an insect gets stuck on here, the trap does something insane to be able to consume the insect, which I'll show you very soon when it obviously traps an insect. The tentacles you see here secrete a sticky mucilage. When an insect gets stuck, the plant slowly begins to curl, just like this. So yeah, I got multiple of these sundew plants, and I even got this slightly different kind of sundew called an octopus plant that will be cool to see. Ended cricket is released into the testing enclosure. Our graphic highlights the sundew's glowing purple hairs as the timer begins and the cricket approaches. What the heck? I was just trying to record that cricket and I just realized there's a jumping spider in here. Do you see that? It's on the little octopus plant. Is it stuck? minutes we've been watching and look at that the cricket is just too smart to fall for it gently pick up the cricket we tried fruit flies but they didn't work out now we place the cricket in the feeding cup and yeah I just dumped a few on the sand and it wasn't long until some of them started to climb all over the stems eventually started getting stuck all over the different sticky parts Even went and just dumped a crazy amount of these flies all over the top of the sundew plants to show you guys how cool sundews really are. are carnivorous, trapping insects like these flies. But could they handle something bigger, like this hamburger? All right, there's still one more major carnivorous plant type that I haven't shown yet. They're called pitcher plants. This plant can also eat insects, and actually how it does it is probably the most brutal out of all of them. Let me show you. What's really cool is if you actually look inside of this pitcher plant, since it's kind of small and shallow, you can actually see the pool of acid at the bottom. It actually looks like there's a couple little flies and stuff in there, which it looks like it's actually already dissolving. Yeah. So yeah, it would be cool to see some crickets falling in these. Let's test it out. These tiny, downward-pointing hairs make escape virtually impossible for the unsuspecting insect. container, you can see many of my flies are starting to hatch, and that means we can finally start doing some massive scale Venus flytrap tests.
we're actually starting to get trapped. Don't worry, because my YouTube friend, Flytrap Films, recorded a test with an insane amount of flies, super similar to this, and he wanted me to show you it. You can see he has a Venus flytrap plant out, and also a bunch of rotten meat in order to attract the flies. And this plant literally just looks like a vacuum cleaner, sucking up all the flies. Which can't be fiber. <laughs> That is probably the craziest performance from a carnivorous plant that I have ever seen. Thank you.